Hey everyone, welcome to Tips and Tricks. Animated GIFs have become a big part of internet culture. They can tell a quick story, display an emotion, or visual representation. One artistic take on the GIF that's becoming increasingly popular is the Cinemagraph, which is essentially a still image with continuous, subtle movement. We're going to give you a quick walkthrough of the essentials of creating a basic Cinemagraph from pre to post-production. When choosing a subject for your Cinemagraph, try to remember a few things. One, continuous motion. In order to create the effect of an infinite loop, your subject needs to have a start point and end point that is visually seamless. For example, a carousel, a fountain, or in our case, a record player, candle, and some smoke. These types of scenarios will ultimately give you the best results and give you a continuous, seamless loop. Two, stabilize your shot. One of the most, if not the most important part of a relationship is stability. I mean, a cinemagraph is stability. You have to have lockdown shots to have a great cinemagraph and relationship. I think you get what I'm saying here. Think of it as a living photograph, which means one thing. You'll need a tripod for your shot and probably a sandbag. This guarantees no camera movement, no shake, and will give you a great end result. Three, frames per second. Whether DSLR or iPhone or whatever camera you decide to use for your cinemagraph, make sure it's able to record video. Although the end result will visually resemble a photograph, you'll need to record this as a video to capture the motion for the cinemagraph, and the rest of the frame can be frozen in post-production. So now, let's get to the shot. All right, here we are. We have our shot selection ready to go and we're going to bring it into Photoshop and get it ready for the web. Now, you'll see your footage within a timeline panel right below. This is what we'll use to trim our video. For starters, we want to make sure the first frame of our cinemagraph is a few frames in. This will help us later on when we get into blending the outpoint. Remember, since we're outputting to the web, a shorter clip means a smaller file size, so we want our loop to be as short as possible. We're going to shoot for one rotation on the record player. In our case, we can make a visual note on the positioning of the record label in our first frame. And this will help us get the loop right. So now let's drag the end of our video layer closer to the first frame. Let's try to get the record label position to match the first frame so it looks like the record is looping over and over again. Let's preview and see what we have so far. Make sure the loop playback setting is checked under the gear icon to preview. As you can see, the record loop looks good, but we're seeing a slight jump from the end point back to the in point on our model. Hang with me, here's how we can fix this. We're going to duplicate our layer by right-clicking on our group and selecting Duplicate Group. Now let's drag the bottom layer to where the top layer ends. Remember we left a few seconds of padding in the front? Now it'll come into play. Let's drag out the bottom layer's in point. We're also going to move the end point of the bottom layer to meet the same end point of the top layer allowing us to blend the end of the cinemagraph back into the beginning. We're going to do this by creating a couple of keyframes that animates the opacity level from 100 down to zero. So let's select the drop down arrow, position the playhead at the beginning of the bottom layer, click the opacity stopwatch, and this will create a keyframe. Right now this keyframe is at 100% opacity as you can see in the layer panel. So now let's move our playhead to the end of the animation and set the opacity to zero. Make sure this keyframe is at the very end of your sequence. Now our loop is looking good. Our out point is fading into our in point pretty seamlessly. And that is the basic principle of a cinemagraph. The last step 
is to mask out all the parts of the cinemagraph that will be static. This helps create the artistic effect of a cinemagraph. We're going to freeze everything except for the record player, the sage smoke, and the candles. I'm going to create a freeze frame of my video layer by making sure nothing is selected and pressing Command Option Shift E. On a PC, that would be Control Alt Shift E. And this creates a freeze frame layer of my scene above my video layer. I'll make this the same length of my video clip. Now we're going to paint over the parts of the image where we want motion in our cinemagraph. This is where having a completely static camera is extremely important, because if there was any movement with my camera, it just wouldn't work. In our case, our subject had to remain very still as well. So now let's create a mask on this new layer and make sure black is your primary color selected. And let's select the brush tool. Select an appropriate brush with little to no hardness that will add feathering. And by pressing the slash key above your return key on your keyboard, this will visually show you exactly where you're painting. I'm going to paint over everything that has motion. This includes the candle, the sage smoke, the record, and the spots where the candle flicker might be reflecting like her face and the wall. Now let's disable the slash visual display and preview our cinemagraph. This looks great. Lastly, we can add any adjustment layers for color correction here in Photoshop as you would a normal image. I've made some corrections to give it more of a retro feel. I promise this is the last step. We're going to optimize this for the internet. So let's click File, Save for Web. Let's make sure GIF is selected in the drop-down menu. If your GIF is a very large file size, it might lag a bit when playing. A good rule of thumb is to keep it under five megabytes. We can make the image size a bit smaller, so let's go with a thousand pixels wide for now. In terms of image quality, Photoshop is defaulting at no dither, which is resulting in poor image quality. I'll select Diffusion to fix this. And already you can see that looks much better. Another setting to change is looping options to forever. This will make the GIF loop over and over again, and over and over again, and over and over again. In the bottom left corner of this dialog box, it will tell you the file size of the GIF. This file size is good for us, so now let's preview our cinemagraph. And there it is, folks. <laughs> it looks great. Now let's save our file, and we're good to go. That's all it takes to create your own cinemagraph. With some creativity and practice, you can create some really intriguing imagery. That's it for this edition of Benro Tips and Tricks. Thanks for watching. See you next time.